an IPCA, what distinguishes it from the other um, protected areas and conserved areas is the um, indigenous inclusion and leadership. So they're important for many different reasons, for resurgence of indigenous governance, indigenous cultures and languages and access to that land. Um, the biggest thing is reconnecting um, to our relationship with the land and that in turn will um, reconnect us to our culture, to our identity as indigenous peoples. Creation was all equal. The, I'm not better than the buffalo or the rock. We're equal. So that equality happened through creation. So when I look at protection and conservation, then I'm starting to look at it from that perspective of being a part of the environment. When we talk indigenous protected areas, I mean, I envision our own people running beautiful places within our regions, teaching our culture to others to, to respect and to work together and to share our indigenous knowledge so that they can survive into the future along with us as well. I see those existing land use plans and, and some of the existing tribal parks and other, other kind of products that have been developed by indigenous nations as worthy of recognition. But the nations are doing this not just for themselves, but for everybody. There's, you know, that cultural responsibility to land isn't just personal, it's about being good for the good of humanity. And so I think that there's space there for partnership and recognition and reconciliation. We will need new tools and a new way of doing conservation while still meeting the requirements of international agreements. And that is, Indigenous peoples are saying, I want this area protected, so what is an Indigenous protected area? So the two systems of law need to talk to each other and respect each other. In this country, in this day and age, you're not going to conserve biodiversity in huge swaths of Canada. You're not going to turn species around from the declines they're in unless you have Indigenous support and, you, and they're at the table and in effect often they're driving or co-driving what's happening. Our long-term vision is for Canada um, to become a leader in the global community in regards to um, Euro-Indigenous collaboration around a, a really innovative leading-edge model of uh, biodiversity conservation. We're not the same from uh, the coast of British Columbia to the Atlantic Ocean, we're uh, to the Arctic Ocean. Uh, we all have our own ways of doing things, so I think that is respected. Um, I feel that. You know, I have talked a lot about capacity, and that's something that we need in order to generate those ideas uh, to make sure that our backyards are looked after. And uh, we've, we found that when uh, we have uh, the federal government, the provincial government, municipal governments, indigenous governments, indigenous people, uh, nonprofits, and others working together for a common cause and establishing protected and conserved areas or indigenous protected and conserved areas, uh, the, the result is, uh, is, is very, very promising and, and bright. Canada is leading when it comes to the Indigenous protected and conserved areas and work with Indigenous people, so that's great that we're kind of at the forefront of that. Now it's implementation time. It's, you know, putting some of these places on the ground and actually protecting them.